kids, I'm Pinky. Here we have an overhead projector, and on it we have a cardboard aperture with a small circle slit cut into it, so that only a small circle of light will actually go through the overhead projector. And the small circle will land on this CD and reflect on this whiteboard here. Next to this CD stand, we have this stand, which will, is a blocker, which will block part of the light hitting the CD. And can you guess what is going to happen? And we're back. Are you ready to see what really happens? Bam! As you can see, there's two rainbows. Who out there predicted that? And these two rainbows are actually caused by double slit diffraction. All right, now that we have this double rainbow up here, can you guess what's going to happen when we cover half the CD? Well, let's find out. Well, there you go. The outer half of the side we covered is gone, but the inner half of the side we didn't cover is gone. What's going on? And now, the brain! Now that we've seen what happens when half the CD is covered, we're going to cover just a small portion of the CD to get a linear spectra and see what occurs. As you can see here, this is the central point of the spectra, and this up here and down here are our two first order diffraction points. In order to attempt to explain what happens when we cover half the CD, we're going to break it down into monochromatic light so we don't have to deal with all the different colors of light light. Again, we're going to cover a small portion of the CD in order to get a linear spectrum. Now like before, with white light, we're getting a central point and the two first order diffractions. See, central points here and the two first orders are there. Now if we rotate this 360 degrees, we'll determine how the arcs are formed. As you can see, as they rotate, the first order diffraction points rotate around the central point of the spectrum. Now, if we uncover and remove this monochromatic filter, you'll see all the visible wavelengths of light rotating in a similar pattern, which, if we drop, bam, forms the arc rainbows. Now, here's Pinky. I'm back. I finally got the chains off and I'm back to explain science. <laughs> Alright, here we have the two first order diffractions. And as you can see, they make the two rainbows. And you notice here, this color is, doesn't really look like any color you normally see in a rainbow. Anyone know why? Well, that's because the red light and the violet light, which normally don't meet in a rainbow, are make, come together here and form this color that's normally referred to as magenta. And as you can see, when we cover half of it, the magenta disappears. All right, here we're going to describe uh, double slit diffraction. Here we have a nice little applet that will show us how to do it. Very simple way. We have a beam of green light. Green light is actually, a, uh, its wavelength is 550 nanometers. That's pretty small, but they're smaller. And anyways, the space between the slits is 1600 nanometers. That, is, that means in a CD, you have, there are divots and there are up parts. And in between the divots and, up and raised surfaces is 1,600 nanometers. And here we can see that when, when you have light going through a double slit, you get these different peak waves of intensity. What happens there is when wind waves go through a double slit, there are constructive and deconstructive waves where the intensity is the greatest, that is where the constructive waves fit perfectly. And where it's minimum is when the waves are out of phase with each other and they actually prevent green light from being seen. And here we can see the first order maximum is at about 20 degrees, which if you measured the CD would be at both, from the point it would be at, at the 20 degrees. The reason why, you go to second order. Second order is second order maximum. Second order maximum, and this is brain over on the computer, by the way, doing a great job. Got this to work. Second order maximum is at a 43.4, which is actually so the circle on C would be have to be about twice as big. And because we don't have a wall that big, and our light wasn't quite bright enough, you would not be able to actually see the second order with your naked eye. But if we had a perfectly dark room, we probably could. And the thing is, when you change to the wavelength, then you change to a different color. 
that say we have red. Well, all of a sudden, because red wavelength is 786 nanometers, the first maximum is at 14 degrees, or 29 degrees, meaning it's further away. And when you slide through the entire scale of the rainbow, just slide it, you can see that the, the first order maximums change and they move, giving us a rainbow.